Hi, I'm Flynn and I love Hot Wheels. It shouldn't come as much of a surprise that Flynn loves Hot Wheels. What young boy doesn't? What he loves doing the most is racing his cars two at a time, like you saw in the previous clip, to see which of his cars are the fastest. So I thought it'd be a really fun project to build a racetrack timer for him that allowed him to measure actually how fast the cars are going. So this is what I have in mind. I'm just gonna use orange, obviously, because Hot Wheels tracks are orange. So I just draw some basic tracks. Okay, here's our two tracks. Here's the start line, here's the finish line, and the idea is that we need to be able to know when the cars have started moving and know when they've reached the finish line. So there'll be two components to this build. There'll be like a starting line, which I'm imagining some type of bridge that sits over the tracks, right, that'll sit between, like that, and there'll be a finish line that'll also sit over the tracks. How's that for terrible drawing? Now the idea is that these two have to communicate with each other. They could either be by a long wire, or in this particular project's case, I'm going to be using Bluetooth to talk to each end. What I want to have at the start is some IR sensors. So I'm just going to do some arrows here on top of each track that can detect when the cars go past. And that'll trigger a start point for each track. And then at the end, there'll be some IR sensors that'll trigger when each car hits the finish line. And what I want to do is put some type of display at the end, maybe a, uh, a seven segment display that I could put a counter on here. How's that for some digits? One, there'll be a counter on here that'll increase in seconds and it'll show the fastest time when a car goes through. So the idea is a car comes in or two cars come in and as they pass the start line, it triggers a counter for each car. They race down the track and when I hit the finish line, it'll trigger a stop for each car and then it'll show up on this display which car won and what their car's time was. That's my plan. So let's see if we can build this on a breadboard. We have a, a nice assortment of components in front of us. Let's have a look at all the different things that we've got. Two breadboards. We've got a eight digit seven segment display. Momentary button. Two nano compatibles. We've got two Bluetooth HC05 modules and four of the IR obstacle avoidance modules. We've got a green LED and a whole bunch of resistors, plus lots of wires. So why do we have two breadboards, two microcontrollers, but only one display and one button? So what we're going to be doing today is building two parts to this project. There's two halves, both of them require a microcontroller with specific code on it to run. We're going to be separating these out like this. We're going to have a breadboard over here with a microcontroller, a display, a Bluetooth module, two obstacle avoidance or IR sensors, and some resistors, which we'll get into in a moment. And then we're going to have the other board, which also has microcontroller, Bluetooth, two sensors, and this time a button and a green LED so we can see when things are working and some resistors as well. So two different halves of the project and rather than building two halves with a, a wire connecting the two together, we're going to be using the Bluetooth modules to communicate back and forwards to each other. So let's start building. Okay, we're going to start off with the side with the seven segment display on it. So let's move everything else out of the way. The first thing we want to do is get our microcontroller onto the board, bridging over the gap. So we want this to be on the right hand side. We're going to need to connect the seven segment display. So that's going to be sitting roughly around like that. We need the Bluetooth module to go on and we're going to need these two obstacle avoidance modules. So they're going to roughly go in the following positions. I'm just going to roughly put them into place so we can get some cables in. Okay, I'll start off with these. Now the reason I want to get them rough placed is we need to get VCC and ground in. We've got a whole bunch of these yellow and orange and red. What I might do is just bring them all on right now, stacks of them. Unfortunately I don't have a, enough red to go around so I'm going to do a mix of orange and red. So we need to get ground and VCC and you can see that the actual modules are labelled VCC, ground and out. So we'll get all the grounds into the right spot. Let's move that over. So we can get the VCC working. Okay, I want them to line up. Okay, we need to get just use orange for now. Now we also need to get out of the ground here 
and the 5 volt pin. Let's see if you can see those. The ground and 5 volt. It's 5 volt. And there's ground. So power will come in to the microcontroller for our test on the breadboard anyway. And we're hooking up this rail across here. Ideally, we just want to do power along the top. Okay, now we're going to need data coming off these, the outs, both on the left hand side. So these are all connected vertically, and then these are connected vertically, but there's a bridge. So I want to bridge these over, just like that. Now before we continue, actually, I'm going to do the same thing again. All the parts that are similar, I'm going to put together on the board at the same time. Make sure it's pushed in. Nothing worse than thinking the pin's in and it's not. So these, as I said, these will be wired exactly the same way as each other. They both need these IR sensors as inputs to control both sides. Okay, so they're both the same. We now need to take data from here. And this is going to roughly D2. This is nice and straight. And then we want a yellow wire. Okay, that actually has to go to D3. So do we have a longer yellow wire? Some of them are longer than other ones. We do. But they're still not going to D3. Let's go backwards then. Let's go. Okay, I might need to move all this over. Okay, that is where we're going to want it. Okay, let's do the same with the other board. Got these both going into D2 and D3 on the microcontroller. Okay, we now need to hook together the Bluetooth modules. You can see on the back of the modules here that there's enable, 5 volt, ground, TX, RX, and the state. Put them roughly for now here. We'll just do one at a time. So, of course, again, we need to get ground and power. So ground is the third pin. Okay. TX and RX will worry about in a moment. Let's go and get these the same. Of course, these don't have to be perfect, but it's always nice to get them roughly aligned. Okay. Now, the odd ones here, of course, are the button and the seven segment display. So have we put these in the right place? Where do we want the button to go? Let's put the button over here, which bridges across, which means the seven segment display is going to go on this module. So with the button, we want to put VCC, or power, to one side, and we need to pull the button low. So rather than using a wire to do that, we're actually going to use a resistor. Okay, it's a 300 ohm resistor. And then what we're going to do is we need to actually tap into that. I think we're going to use D8 to tap into that. So we need to make a wire that can bend around. It's going to tap into that line. That's going to be way too long. Get it roughly in the right position. It goes there, it goes there, and we want D8. So this is going to be roughly there. Pin that down. And it's a little bit long, but that's okay. It's not the neatest work, but there you go. It's out of the way. So that way we can read our button coming in at D8. Now we also want to put the LED in. And we need the uh, LED to also have little resistor, so we'll put the LED, we want that to go high, and then we want this resistor to go here. So I might move this over so we've got room. Okay, and we want that to go to A0. We're probably not going to have a cable long enough to do that, so I'll probably just pick one of these, just for now. So I want this to go to A0. Okay, now, the tricky part. The TX and the RX of the Bluetooth module need to plug into the TX and the RX of the microcontroller. 
which is just here. So the TX here goes to RX and the RX here goes to TX. So they communicate back and forwards to each other. The tricky thing is the data needs to be sent in 3.3 volts, at least from the microcontroller to the Bluetooth module. But the actual voltage coming out of this is five volts. What we need to do is lower the voltage going from the TX here to the RX over here. And the way we do that is we put two resistors in series and we tap into the middle of them. So we need a 2K resistor and a 4K resistor. I think it's 2.2, 4.7. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna put these in like this and we're going to go in the middle of that and that's gonna be our TX going into our RX. So RX is here. And the TX is gonna come out, it's purple. TX is purple and the RX here is gray. So the TX has to go into the RX. So the TX is gonna tap into there. And the RX is gonna go, the receiver is gonna go straight to the TX here. Basically we've got RX from here goes into TX. So this is gonna transmit and it's gonna receive. This is gonna transmit the purple one and it's going to go to the start of this resistor. And then in the middle of the two resistors, we're tapping into it and we're going into the module here. Now we need to do that for both modules. So let's just move that one over. Let's do the same thing again. I'm gonna grab our 2.2K resistor, put it there. So it's an identical layout. In this case, we're gonna be using blue and green. So put the RX and the TX. The TX is going to the, which is green, is going to the RX, which is here. The RX goes to the TX, which is on the board. And I need one more wire. So there are two Bluetooth modules set up. So the only thing we need to do now is connect the seven segment display. And that's gonna be sitting roughly here. So the way we're gonna connect that, it's gonna be hard to connect because of this overlap for the pins. So if I put it there, it's very hard to get to the pins. So what I might do is move it down here as far as I can get it. And I might just bridge across. So what do we need? We've got five pins. Okay, a clock, chip select, data in, ground and VCC. Ground and the VCC, they're pretty straightforward. But I'm gonna need five pins going across. Start here, one, two, might make some more. So one, two, three, one, two, three, and then we need ground and VCC. So I'm going to need, this one will be VCC, don't have a long enough one. Let's see if we can find some more first before we make some more. Let's try some different colours, shall we? Got lots of colours. So VCC is the last pin. That's ground. Might as well just use these if I've got these. One. Two. Again, not the neatest work ever. That will do. So with that plugged in there, we can now tap into those and bring them across to here. What do I need? I need three, three cables. I was gonna do them all nice and neatly, but I just don't know if I'll be able to. So this is gonna be going to D4, D5, and D6. And I'm not quite sure of the order yet, so I will worry about that a little bit later. I'll put them in just in order for now. D4, D5, and D6. I'm just gonna do them pseudo neatly. And when I say pseudo, I mean really not much at all. Not neat at all. Nice thing about these going in is I don't particularly know which order they need to be yet. I can change them by code. So I can make each of these pins whichever one I want to. For now we want to get it fairly neat. Okay, that's both boards made. We've got our VCC in ground for both sets of obstacles, avoidance modules. We've got our VCC and ground set for our two Bluetooth modules. We've got our button and our LED set up okay with a limiting resistor for the LED and a pull down resistor for the button. We've got a seven segment display that's got VCC and ground coming through. And you can see that's VCC and ground according to the pinouts. And then we've got our, our clock, our CS and our data over here, which are wrapping around to D4, five and six. So it's all our power on one side of each breadboard and then all our data coming through at the back for the obstacle avoidance and the RX and TX set up correctly for the Bluetooth modules. Now, one thing that I've already done that is, is obviously mandatory for this project is I've got both of the Bluetooth modules talking to each other. When they power up, one of them is a master and one of them is a slave. They're both running at 38400 board rate and 
those have been already set up and I might do a separate video on that process at another time. It's not too difficult. The only issue I really had with it was I could not put them into AT command mode using these microcontrollers. I had to actually go out and get my Arduino Uno to program them because for some reason the RX and the TX on these were just not enabling the AT command mode. That was the only obstacle though. Okay, so that's the breadboard build complete. In part two of this video, we'll be looking at the code, how the code works, and actually putting the code onto the microcontrollers, and getting them talking to each other. Until then, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you are a new subscriber, welcome. It's great to have you here. And until next time, catch you later.